seats. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back after lunch. Uh, final three <coughs> sessions uh, for you before we, we take our leave. And the first session this afternoon is the status of TV and video audience measurement in Europe. Uh, to go through that, we have uh, next to me uh, Pushkar Kalani, who is the founding partner of Pure Cross Media. Jill McGrath is next to him, CEO of TAM Island. Uh, Shushmita Jain, the product director, data science at Kantar Media. And Till Sudworth, who is CMO and head of BU Video Analytics for NPOR. Till, let's do the what we do all day question. What does BU stand for? Business unit. Of course. Mm. Uh, should have been obvious. And, and NPOR generally, they, what, what's the, uh, uh, the, the, the coverage areas of the company? So uh, video, uh, NPOR is um, a video analytics platform. Um, we basically track everything that is happening on the video platform of our customers, such as broadcasters, cell operators, or OTT players. And we track, or we cover two fields more or less. One is everything that is um, you know, covering the topic quality of experience, so quality of experience from a, uh, in the player, like, app cra uh, like, like uh, buffer ratio, um, crashes, errors, um, but so also making like sure crashes. I get the live content, but it still counts as live or no, no pixelation or anything going on in the exactly, picture. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Everything that, that covers the perceived quality of experience from the end user. So that is one field. The other field is uh, more related to the business owner and marketing topics um, as user journey. Uh, user journey, you know, um, analyze the user journey, analyze the content consumption patterns of the end user. What content is he watching? Where and which device? So the audience analytics more or less. So these two fields we're covering. We are um, tracking over 50 billion uh, video plays every month in literally every country in the world. And, and where are you all based? We're based in Barcelona. Yeah. Uh, Shusmita is next. And Kantar Media, kind of the power behind lots of audience systems, really. Yeah, exactly. So we are solution providers to um, our clients and try and solve and support them um, depending on you know what problem they have. And we have our own tagging as well. So we do tagging for streaming services, um, you know, recruitment of panel, providing data science solution, uh, reporting tool, and then finally de delivering a currency level data set in the market. I must say that the data that you produce for the UK market, I'm sure you do the same in many other markets too, being able to see who, for example, the top five streaming services and a good, um, a good estimation of exactly how many they have information, which of course the streaming services, as we've learned, don't tend to give out too much data themselves. So it's mm. useful to have that, that first-hand information and also quite fun to guess who number six and number seven might be, who you're not actually <laughs> tracking. Uh, Jill from, from Tam, from Tam mm. Island, so uh, in, in Ireland, um, and I guess doing the research for, um, for the Irish channels, amongst other things. Yes, yeah, so, so we are a JIC, so our stakeholders are all the broadcasters that sell advertising into the Irish market. So yes, they're the Irish broadcasters, but also actually the UK broadcasters too. So, so those ones which are broadcasting in, yes. in, the, in the Republic as, yeah. as well as in the North? Yeah, so they'd be our stakeholders too. Okay. So, um, so, yeah, go on. Yep, yeah, no, and um, so we kind of oversee the, the measurement and, and the traded currency. So in the Irish market, the measurement is conducted by Nielsen, and, uh, but very similar to the UK. So we're like Barb, um, if you like, but yeah. for the Irish market. That's good, thank you. And uh, Pushka, to uh, finish off with, tell us, tell us a bit about Pure Cross Media. So, yeah, so Pure Cross Media, it's a consultancy company which is basically into the sphere of cross media, cross platform audience measurement. So what we do is we, are usually uh, working with JICs or regulatory bodies in, in the country's trade, uh, media trade bodies, or even the broadcasters, and very recently, the connected TV and the fast TV, whoever wants to do audience measurement, work out what's the best solution for them, and then therefore connect them with the best suppliers that are, that are there. And then also, we are into the auditing part where if there is any service happening, any data that are coming in, validate that and see what's the best available there. Mm. It's interesting, I'm, uh, my mind was ticking when the earlier presentation involving YouTube, because you've got a lot of big brands appearing, appearing there now, the broadcasters, but also 
a lot of newspapers, for example, put video attached to their content. Do they, do they want to like to track them all the way through effectively from, from page through to screen? A absolutely, and I think what is, uh, so that's where, so there are different solutions and, and like uh, Kantar has some solutions, Nielsen have some solutions which are people meter device based or for, mother, for that matter data related, which is census measurement and all that. But what's the best available solution for them and where impressions can be changed into impacts and the demographics can be mm. overlaid onto that is what is important. And that's, that's where we give that strategic inputs and we work out the architecture in terms of how best that can be Interesting. solved. Okay, thank you. Jill, let's, let, let's start with you then and get things uh, underway. The kind of trends that are changing the measure, audience measurement industry at the moment. And I get the, the blindingly obvious one we alluded to earlier with streaming services coming in and the need f to count them, particularly as they're opening up to advertising. Absolutely, yeah. And um, so... Really, I suppose what we've been focused on over the last number of years is building up uh, what we call a total video panel. So we have a streaming meter, which is similar to the router meter that Kantar have in um, the households, uh, which is measuring all of their devices. So we un can understand at a service level, the, if you like, the total viewing landscape um, of the households. And that's really, really useful, but doesn't give us the content. Um, so that's, I suppose, the, the piece of the jigsaw that, that's missing at the moment. But at least we can understand from a viewing perspective how much they're spending, how much time they're spending with each service. But I guess you can do things, I don't know if you do, I'm just, it, it would seem logical if there is a big release on one of the streaming services. For example, we've got the, the final season of Stranger Things, I think, is, is coming up shortly. If Stranger Things is deposited on the Thursday and you see a surge on the Friday, then you can make some sort of correlation, even if it's not actually watching that precise show. In theory, yes, we could, but we're very precise. Uh, of course you <laughs> are. It's a, uh, because you can, it's a trading you as currency, as you so can, I suppose, I yeah. Um, so, yes, in theory, absolutely, that, that is possible. And, and knowing the service that they're connecting with is hugely important, I think, to, to just get that total view of the landscape. And then when it comes down to, to content, I think that, I mean, they're there in the UK and, and we're heading there in, in Ireland. And that landscape itself is one in all markets, of course, where you've got, you've got the big screen, which just keeps getting mm -hmm. bigger and bigger and bigger. But on the other hand, you've got smaller devices, mm -hmm. particularly mobiles, but yeah. uh, there's plenty of other things. These things, I guess, are used, the tablets used... Uh, uh, a fair amount by some people. I saw someone on the train home last night who was uh, clearly watching TV on their on their on their tablet and getting an idea of the measurement between those by devices. devices. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so the TV set, uh, as I think we've heard in, in a lot of the sessions, is by far the biggest. Uh, so people spend about over eighty percent of their of their viewing time is on, with the TV set, uh, and the smartphone is second at around 13, 14%. So the other devices, the, the laptop and, and the tablet are actually pretty So small. despite what we're being told, oh, people are watching TV on the go, they're not. No, they're, no. They're still usually. sat on the sofa yeah. like they always mm. were. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's absolutely yeah. what Absolutely, uh, what Jill said, I think TV is still the biggest. And that, like one of uh, my ex-boss used to say, TV is not dead, it just has small babies now. <laughs> So it's, you're watching content, but you're watching it on smaller screens. And these babies are getting bigger and bigger, but by far TV is still, the large screen is still the king. And it's, it's, it's interesting. There, were, there was something came up the, uh, this morning where sort of NBC in the United States on, on Peacock, they're allowing people to purchase items seen in, what's it called now, below decks, this... Um, sort of seaborne reality yeah. kind of thing. Um, <laughs> I'm not a fan, as you can tell. But you can, <laughs> you can buy items related to that, and it might be, I don't know, a crockery set, it might be a sailor's uniform, or whatever they might, they, they might be having. That was like 20-odd 20, 20 years ago, we were hearing PowerPoints, uh, having PowerPoints about that. At the same time, we were being told, oh, people will follow from phones to, to TV sets. Are they? 
<laughs> no, that's... I, I, is, is the audience continuing to watch? Do you start watching something on the train and then finish it at home? Or are you watching a completely different piece of content? I, the, there, uh, I've, there is a trend on what, what's happening. I think uh, a basic nature, uh, human nature, is that you watch something with the biggest available screen that you have in front of you. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so if you're watching it on, on a mobile and if you get home, you might finish that, and with, with, with all everything connected nowadays, you can view or finish what you were watching on a big screen. And similarly, if you're watching something on a big screen and then you have to go out, you usually carry your mobile or a tablet and you watch but it. But does that depend on the content? Because if you're watching, I don't know, something in the Rugby World Cup, you might want to continue watching that because you, you agreed to go out before you knew your team would be in the semi or whatever. Um, and you follow that through. But if it's something like a recorded drama, you might think, oh, I'll just watch the rest tomorrow. Absolutely. I think, can I, I, think, I think there is that differentiation there where uh, live sport, or specifically sporting events and live stuff, is usually watched. On, uh, they do not want to break that viewing pattern, or they would want to watch it completely. But yes, when it comes to different content, then they already have, that they have episodes which are already downloaded on their mobile, and they'll say, okay, we'll watch it there on the go. Or if they are sitting in front of a screen, they'll say, okay, fine, let's watch it over here. I think one of the issues, isn't it, there's so many different ways to watch things these days, which makes the, yeah. sort of the audience... And that, that's, that's the biggest challenge for audience measurement, because people now can watch anything, anywhere, and any, at any time. Mm -hmm. But it's quite interesting, actually, the, the trend that um, usage of, of video on the cell phone is, is small, it's actually decreasing. So it's continued that trend because we thought that- Decreasing. Yeah, it's decreasing. So we thought that during COVID, obviously, where everybody you know, spent more time at home and we know that a lot of people actually did the purchase of the next smart TV earlier than they actually were planned because they spent more time at home. Uh, that was not kind of surprising that obviously then the, the time, the amount of um, TV consumption in front of the big screen went up. But we actually expected, a lot of people expected that after uh, the pandemic is over and the people go back to the office again, they go back to commuting again, but then actually the, the consumption on their cell phone is increasing. But we see nowadays that's not the case. So even this year, it's still continuously decreasing and um, the main, by far the main device, as you said as well, um, of, uh, for using video content is a big, are the big screens, right? Either a smart TV or a TV um, made smart with a Zeta box or a, a console watching on the big screen. But purely that's the most topic. And of course, it, it depends a little bit on, on, the, on, on the content, right, as you mentioned. Um, it depends a little bit on the, on the urgency in terms of uh, do you need to watch it now? Um, so some big event, you, you might be on the run on the, you know, on, the, on the subway or wherever, and then you watch it on the mobile phones. But in general, uh, the big TV screen is by far the most important device. Mm. I want to come to this meter in a moment, but I, I, just a, ge a general thought. On, on this topic, Do, does anybody have any sort of evidence of mobile viewing within the home? You know, it's, uh, it's time to go to bed and the, the tablet or the mobile comes to finish off that late night golf tournament or something. Yeah, we, we, we do. I mean, that really differs a lot regarding the, the, the age and, the, uh, you know, and, and the, the target group. So is it a, a multi-person household, right? Are they, a lot of different people in the household, other younger people in the household. So it really depends. But you do have a, a mobile consumption in, in the home as well. Because they used to, they used to be, yeah, sorry. sorry. Uh, there is evidence in terms of, uh, like for example, uh, uh, and Sushmita uh, would be able to second that, and Bob, when they initially started uh, measuring uh, 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 secondary device, uh, viewing on secondary mm -hmm. devices, mobiles and tablets. There is the peak, or uh, the peak for viewing the trend when you look at a daily trend. The peak for TV and the peak for uh, uh, secondary devices was a bit later than with what it was for TV. Interesting. Yeah. I, I remember there also used to be something where Spain had two prime time peaks because of the uh, the tendency for a siesta. I have no idea if that's still the uh, still the case. Uh, Sushmita, what what are clients ask, asking for in terms of the data collection. They presumably they want everything from all of these devices and presumably they want more after that. Yeah, everything is the right answer. Uh, <laughs> uh, but what they're asking for is a reliable currency grade measurement uh, without any fragmentation, which has 
inputs and the strengths for of all the data sets that are available in the market. So you know there is people-based measurement, obviously the router meters, but then there is also census measurement, which is device level, it does not have people meter. Um, there is return path data, again around millions of boxes returning data on a daily basis. So there are all these different data sets and how do we measure reliably, have one data set that has all of these information um, uh, that can go in the market as a currency. So yeah, that's that's one of the main. Uh, no, I guess it used to be fairly in terms of you know working out you know what people get. It used to be straightforward. Four channels, no problem at all. You can you can work that out. But then, I guess you can get into the realms of the family not actually knowing what service they get, particularly if it's I don't know a secondary member of the family. Uh, um, a child or something, old, older child who just not really sure what, uh, what mum and dad have got and trying to work out if they subscribe to Disney Plus or actually they're maybe watching something on Netflix in, instead. Yeah, absolutely. And what we measure is the end product of that, what was watched and by whom. So we have that uh, in the panel. We don't capture the confusion. Um, but yeah, we know who in the house was watching, whether it was co-viewed, how many people were watching together, um, who in the home has how many devices, how many cell phones, tablets, access to TV and how many TV sets. So we have all this information, which is extremely valuable. And, and, and how, does it, how does it work? If, if I was, uh, say, a member, I suppose, of the bar panel or, mm -hmm. or TAM or whatever, what, what would I have? Would I have various bits of electronic wizardry connected to my set-top box, my television, an app on my phone which measured stuff? What, so what one, sort of one is the traditional people meter, which, uh, you know, which, which uh, captures TV, TAM. Um, the another one is the router meter. So that, it's a small meter which would just sit close to your TV or your router meter, uh, and you wouldn't even notice it. It just captures all the information, all the data that goes through the router. So it knows what is being watched at what time. Um, but by what is being watched, it only, you know, obviously what's being watched, and if it was a scheduled st stream, no problem at all. But if it's, um, if it's Netflix, you, we know. or Amazon, you don't know, do you? you so, we, uh, so in BART specifically, we know. Uh, so there was a, a big project that Cantor did uh, where we watermarked content on Netflix. So we could capture Netflix at content level, but that was uh, only in this market. Otherwise, we capture, you're right, Netflix, YouTube, Amazon, everything at a platform level. Okay. And, and the, uh, in terms of what the, I guess, the information which is looked for, is it just, um, for example, would it extend to whether people are watching those advertising breaks, the old you know, line about, you know, the... Elect electricity peaks in the commercial break in Coronation Street. I suspect that probably happens only to a lesser extent these days. Yeah, yeah, but we, yeah, we captured exactly all of that. We know when exactly was the commercial break, and we know that channel was switched at that point of time or not. Uh, we know who consumed the break. We know who was watching. So, yeah, all of this information is used when we are then combining this data set with, you know, streaming data or uh, census level return part data or any other data that goes into one big data set, uh, which would which would give you information about who was watching would also give you information about what was the accurate amount of usage in that okay. country using all the devices in the country. And, and in terms of, of the devices, do you just say mobile or do you divide it up into iPhone, Android, types of Android, size of the TV screen? Because I guess in, to many broadcasters, knowing that it's a, a larger screen rather than a smaller screen is probably useful information. So uh, we have that information, but it's uh, not, I mean, we know the device type. We know it's mobile, it's tablet, it's uh, TV. We know number of TV sets in the home. We know which mobile uh, it is, as in what's the manufacturer of the mobile. We do know whether it's Android or iOS. Sometimes there are also different technology that we need to have in place to measure iOS uh, and, and Android. So we are currently working in Brazil with um, capturing YouTube data and we had to have different technology for iOS and for um, Android to capture in the panel. Okay. Koshka, tell, tell me a little bit more, if you can, about the, the people meter and how, the, 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 I guess, how it, 
how it how it fun how it functions, I guess, at its uh, its basic level, and making sure that all the information so people comes through. People meter, it's it's a device. It's like a, a set top box uh, that size, and it primarily does three things. It one, it tells you what is being it gets connected to the TV. It switch on, switches on when the TV gets switched on. What it does is it f first works out what is being watched, so it will identify what channel it is, what time, so it will have timestamps put into that data, so you will have that, and the third is who's watching it. So as Sushmita said, the demographic part of it is very important, and at this point, even after 40, 45 years of TV audience measurement that has been happening, People Meters is still by far the best device to be able to measure what's being viewed on a TV set. So that's uh, there. And then the second part which has come in, the router meter. The router meter is again a smaller device than that, which is connected to the router in the household and all the traffic that is happening, irrespective of what device is being going through, and if there is any video being watched, that information gets captured. And that information, how does the router meter come to know about that information? Is the tags that the broadcasters put in there uh, uh, in their broadcast or in right. their and they would be subscribing broadcasters. So exactly. if you're not subscribing, you, you don't have the tag, mm -hmm. and it makes you another. Yeah. So, so with the tags, the best uh, uh, what it does it works on the best of the both worlds. One is it will tell you who's watching it, so you get the demographics within the panel. You know who's watching it. Plus, it does a census measurement, irrespective of the demographics. You will still come to know who's watching what because the tags are always there. Right. So just to, sorry, just to be clear there, if you're, another, if you're not a subscribing channel, you get no tag. So yeah. not even somebody who is subscribing knows what this really small rival is, um, is, is, is getting. It's just It's, it's just, just the another. subscriber, it's just the, uh, like the members of the board, uh, of the JICs, okay. who have agreed to put those tags in. That, that makes sense. And people meet a technology. I, one, one would imagine that's... That's changed in the same way that the, the, the set-top box designed for viewing is. changed. Yes, it must, has changed. It must give you far more sophisticated information, or perhaps faster information than it, was it, previously it, the it, case. It, 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 it has. It has changed, one, in functionality also, and in aesthetics also. Nowadays, Kantar, Nielsen, uh, GFK, they've all come up with a more sleek kind of a people meter, which, which is a tablet meter. So it looks like a tablet, which is kept in front of the TV. So it, uh, earlier, there used to be these big fat boxes kept in front of the TV, which would, uh, which would destroy the aesthetics of the living room or whatever yes, it is. But sure. now it is. And plus, uh, it's become, uh, the data is collected and can be, has, theoretically has the ability to send the data back at a second-to-second -second level because it is connected to either a, a mobile network or the Wi-Fi of the household. So, that, so there is no loss of data. In good old days, if the electricity used to go away, uh, you couldn't get the data back from the meters. But this time, uh, but with now with uh, all the technology put in, you can get the data at a minute to minute level, so you do not lose data. Uh, I imagine this would be like the smart meter on my electricity. Absolutely. Kind of similar, similar sort, sort of uh, thing, only less, less expensive. Uh, Jill, tell me a little bit about uh, the broadband panel that I think you mm -hmm. have. Yeah, so, so that's really doing a. Um, what we're talking about. That they've got the router meters or, or the streaming meter in their household. It's, uh, we make it mandatory for every device in the household has to be captured so that we get that understanding of the whole household and exactly what, what they're doing, how much time they're spending. So when you're talking about the piece that's missing, that, that piece of information that's missing, so yes, the broadcasters have their content tagged, but we do at least have an understanding of how much time and how many are um, viewing Netflix and YouTube and Amazon and, and uh, all the different services. So we understand that at the service level, uh, not at the, at the content level. Um, so it definitely gives us that whole picture, which is really valuable, obviously, to both advertisers and the broadcasters mm. to understand how viewing behavior is changing and uh, to be able to follow, you know, for the advertisers to be able to follow them around and, yes. and, and uh, reach them in, in all of the different places. So I guess that is one of the things, you know, particularly for the, the major companies, they'll be placing adverts for maybe for different products, mm -hmm. but they'll be placing adverts across a whole gamut of, of, of channels. So the ability for them to see, I don't know, for the sake of argument, if their ad is performing 
better on broadband to what, sorry, better on mobile, I should say, to what it might do during, I don't know, the afternoon on Channel 4 or wherever. That, that, that's valuable information for them. Uh, yes, it, it is if, uh, when we get it right. Not, but we're uh, not there yet. Right, um, so, how, how, so how, how long? Because it, that, that feels a very, it's one of these things, you, you can track on the web, and I guess there's lots of advertisers who want to be able to track things mm. on the TV in exactly the same way that they can on the web. Well, I think this, this is the kind of big challenge of the industry, really, is to be able to pull all of that together. So you've got the, the linear ad viewing, which we can capture, which we've got a really good understanding of, um, and we sell it based on, uh, on the length of time people spend viewing the, the commercial. We know when they fast forwarded, all of that kind of stuff. And then you go to the digital delivery, which is delivered on ad servers. So it's a different platform. So you're going outside the broadcaster mm. environment. Um, it's you know, operated by third parties. There's a lot of programmatic, which is huge in Ireland, um, a lot bigger than in the UK, actually. It accounts for about 70% of ad sales, uh, digital ad sales in, in the Irish market. And so trying to pull all of that together, which is what the advertisers really want, is where the challenge lies mm. because it's a different type of measurement it's a different type of audience it's a different uh, the whole collection is done in a different way <coughs> you were mentioning second by second and yeah. i think that's something that we're going to see become more and more important because we've got to level up impacts and impressions and make them both the same because otherwise we can't uh, get that full understanding of, of the, the ad consumption. And, and again, it's interesting when you might have um, a, a linear channel, which is broadcasting in the way that linear channels do, transmit on the hill, et cetera, but that same content is also appearing on that broadcaster's online yes. service with the ads coming in in a completely different way. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And completely different ads. Yeah, but no, precise, yeah. precisely, yeah. precisely. Yeah. The, the different, the, the split selling of the, uh, in the in the inventory. In a, and addressable, in a addressable brings a whole other kind of challenge to the market too. So yeah, the the, the pulling together. We have the, the kind of individual uh, ways of measuring each type of advertising, but pulling them all together, which is really what the advertisers want. And when you go into a household to, to gather. The, the information. How do you uh, how do you make sure that you've got the correct data about that house? Either survey or uh, yes. how's, how's that done? Yeah. So, so originally, what we do, we, we conduct what we call an establishment survey. So we're interviewing, in the case of Ireland, ten thousand households uh, every year to understand what the viewing landscape is and, and how many you know different households, different reception types, different numbers of devices, all of that to kind of give us the total landscape. And then we build the panel to match that landscape. That's mm. essentially how it's done. What's the best way to measure VO, VOD consumption overall? Pushko, is that it, I guess partnerships are needed with the uh, VOD service. I think, I've, uh, I'll come to you properly in a moment, uh, Summer and Barb, I think, haven't they? We've, now we've got, is it Netflix is a member of Barb now? Is that correct? I'm trying to, trying to remember. Are there any other streaming services who aren't sort of like yeah. accounted for already so, in? So, uh, Julian, you're uh, absolutely right. So what we've been talking about, the meters and the devices, we can get whatever information that is available and the best possible way, as, as Jill put it, we have to have the accurate information. So with the devices, with the research methodologies, that are the best ways to do it. However, with, with so many third parties involved in the digital broadcast, all the advertising world and all that, it becomes important to actually get what is available in terms of first party, second party, third party data, and then be able to actually harmonize that, to be able to standardize that, and then use that on top of whatever information that we have from the panels to be able to create that aggregate rating which Jill is talking about and which the advertisers and the media agencies are asking for. Do we, um, how, how, how far are we from actually having full programming listings what, for, the, uh, for, the, for the streamers? What I said was very easy it's easier to say than to be done. Yes. To get those partnerships in place and to get all these different 
I would say uh, pieces within the jigsaw to put into place to get the picture is still quite challenging and there's, there are discussions happening there. In different countries, there are different, they are at different level uh, uh, in, uh, in terms of where, where it fits in. There have been dialogues like, for example, in Sweden, Google was working with MMS, which is the chick over there. In the Southeast Asia, there are, uh, 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 there are countries where they're talking to the different uh, uh, walled gardens for that matter to get the data. It's at different levels. However, I think the aim is for everybody is to get there where all that data can come in, and therefore we can get that aggregate rating or reach and frequency, which we always want. Because even, even with the public service broadcasters, who give you, give you a little, you know, they'll send a press release and say the final of the Women's World Cup had, I'm trying to remember how many viewers it was now, but then they'll also add on, oh, and by the way, we had this amount of streams. But it, one feels it's not always completely comparable with the, with the tr traditional viewing data. Yeah. And that's, that, uh, as it's changing, but uh, I would say that's where some of the markets are, where you have the, street, uh, you have the information in terms of how many do downloads happen, how many uh, views happened and all. However, you do not actually know at the back whether it was, a, it, it's all at device level. So mm. who actually was viewing it or who actually was downloading it. So you do not have those demographics. And that is what needs to also come into the picture. And the advertisers are becoming smarter and smarter. They are, no, gone are the days where they would say, okay, fine, I have these many spots. Let's just put it on anywhere in digital. Digital is sexy, let's just do it. No. They want to know whether they're reaching the right audiences with their, uh, with their advertisements, with their bursts or not. Mm. Uh, Jill, is, is there much of a difference between, I, I can imagine VOD and AVOD being, AVOD being measured pretty similarly, but what about fast? Is that um, different or is it still part of the, well, part of the still, same mix? It's still part of the same ecosystem. So, you know, we, we've got the kind of, if you bundle them all together, you've kind of got the linear ecosystem and you've got the digital ecosystem. And, and th those are the two pieces that we're trying to bring together to all look as one. Um, so we have the same challenges uh, with FAST and with AVOD as you have with VOD. It's, it's, you know, it's the same thing. If, if it's delivered digitally, then we need to just be able to capture the data and report it in a similar way to what we do with linear. But so I'm, I'm thinking some organizations, for example, ITVX have some mm -hmm. fast channels. Mm -hmm. and I think Amazon do as well. How, how, is there any way of knowing if you're watching premium content on ITVX or one of the fast channels on ITVX? I'm just using that as an example because they came into my head, but uh, you, you know what I mean. Um, that, that really depends on, where, you know, if they're, if they're viewing it on the TV set, I would say, yes, we have a very good idea. Okay, so yes. you, can, you can, can separate uh, the two. That's uh, useful. Um, in, in terms of the audience measurement in the monetization, this is complicated, so I'm happy to look at my line, lines here. The ability to then leverage the information that has been gotten in order to help the advertiser fulfill their campaign better, be that, I suppose, extending it for longer or maybe even pulling back and having another burst a few weeks later. How, how do those things marry up? So, so audience measurement per se is, uh, is, is, is helping out uh, uh, the media agencies or the advertisers to work out their return on investment. What has been happening is even, even if you look at it uh, from, uh, uh, from the media agency's point of view, Till, till very late, uh, they were uh, the, uh, the measurement or the data being used or the marketing uh, mix used to be in silos. So TV was uh, 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 analyzed separately, uh, radio was analyzed separately, digital internet. But now they all, with, 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 uh, with the media mix expanding and everybody, uh, the same spots going on different platforms, they all want it together. And therefore, the aggregate, which uh, Shushmita mentioned, the ag getting that aggregating, aggregated rate and reach and frequency is becoming that much more important. And that's where the entire audience measurement world is, or the, is working towards, to be able to make them do a reach and frequency where they will know how much of it did they get from, uh, 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 from TV linear and 
what was the overlay on top of that from the digital and how did it expand it? Because there's all sorts of elements which um, sort of added to this. I, I guess a third party data which broadcasters might hold and they can use on some panels. I don't know if that's one for Shushmita or for, uh, mm. take, take, yeah, take no, that we, one. Well, we have first party data, third party data, I mean, the, yeah. So um, broadcasters have their own login data, uh, you know, which uh, they're, they're mandatory login in quite a few countries. And Channel 4 have been very, very good at getting that underway. And, and every time I go in to just watch something simple on the BBC now, they want me to log in, not even to watch video, but all yep. using that, that same, same, same detail they have about me. Exactly. So it's that data. And then the third party data, which is something like having Cantor tags embedded into, let's say, BBC iPlayer, where Cantor gets the information of anyone in the country who would watch BBC iPlayer on uh, what was watched and for how long. Uh, so yeah, there's first party data, there's third party data, there is also people-centric data, which is panel data. And I think uh, it is all about combining all of this meaningfully, applying data science techniques to have, again, one data set which has all, all the information from all these, um, uh, you know, different inputs. Mm. Uh, Till, um, is it possible, you can account, I guess, for the, the different addressable spots on different broadcast streams? That, that can be uh, accounted for too. I think it's, uh, first, before I answer that question, I think it's important to understand how our product differentiate maybe from the, from the other panels sure. here. Sure. Um, because what, we are a little bit the exotic animal here. So we, I mean, we have the luxury that we're purely measuring IP um, devices. And, and there, pretty much, we are in the situation that you mentioned before. I think that you know from the web what you can track on the web. We can track on, on the video perspective when it's IP uh, based. So that's something where we cover much, much more data far beyond uh, audience analytics. And of course, we can then correlate a lot and, and really create, create samples and, and real-time data. And I think that's a really important thing that, especially when we're looking in, into the future, which will, will become more and more important that you have the, the, the time until you have the, the results and the data available is becoming more and more crucial, right? Because uh, competition is, is fierce and you need to make the best action based on data, <clears throat> ideally, you know, today and now, not, not, not the, in, in the next day. So I think that's really important to understand. We are pr providing analytics, uh, like really 360 degrees analytics, a lot of segmentation possibilities, but purely for IP, right? And therefore, we don't have these the issues that you have, fortunately, but of course, then, of course, it's only IP-based. Mm. And I guess our, our friend AI can presumably help at some, some stage along this as, as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, one of the biggest challenges that we face is, is that we have so many and different KPIs and so much uh, data, or so, you know, different possibilities for our customers that sometimes they, they're purely overwhelmed, right, by the, by the incredible amount of, of data points. And, and we see that it's getting more and more important to support them by the, with technology uh, to, 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 to work with these data and, and to analyze the data and to take the next best action on, based on the data. So I think their AI will be a major game changer uh, from two perspectives. I think the first, the first phase will be something where AI supports more the, the analysis of the data, right, to understand the data better, to, to do correlation uh, faster. I mean, as I said, so many data points, it's purely almost impossible for a human being really to collect and correlate all these data. So I think that would be the first phase for, for AI. And then the second more important phase will be predictive analysis that you really don't only look at you know, what happened yesterday, uh, but that with, with the help of machine learning and AI that you see actually what could happen the next day with that content at that you know, period at that time. So I think these two points are very important for, for analyzing data and analyzing, well, measuring audience. I guess also the, the, the placing of Commercials. You know, we we see that obviously now through targeted advertising and uh, the use of the, the data sets that we were we were talking about. But I, you know, I I can imagine the kind of thing where you've been I don't know looking for a new lawnmower and your your online visits is uh, subsequently you have nothing else but lawnmower ads appearing appearing everywhere. But I I I can imagine that if you like supersized through through AI in order to really target people based, I don't know, if you, your, shopping, your shopping is due, due to go shopping, up pops an ad for Tesco. 
Yeah, I think uh, again that's that's you know a matter of, of sampling and 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 shaping the, the the target group that you want to to reach with the advertising. It's already possible with, with in the IP world. Uh, you know, I mean, we, we all have that experience from e-commerce and, and, and online shopping. Uh, so basically, everything that that's possible there is possible already now in the in the IP world of, of video streaming. Um, but of course, AI will will support there uh, in terms of making more advanced and more intelligent uh, proposals or suggestions for for the for the next best. Uh, or shopping experience or whatever. It would be fun one, one day of the year just to opt out of everything so you get like, uh, you know, back to the old days of washing up liquid and Burgess paints <laughs> and that, uh, that, that sort of thing. What about the feature though? What, um, what are we going to see happening next? You, you've outlined some of that a little bit, Till, but what, what about Pushka for ad advertisers and their commercials, how, how might they change from um, in, a, in, a, in, a in a future world? Do we maybe no longer have the glossy commercials we do now because we have, have to have more commercials because they have to be targeted? Yeah, I, uh, I think uh, 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 a couple of sessions back uh, we were talking about uh, advertisements on, uh, on connected TV and fast channels and all that in terms of uh, the whole thing about whether an individual wants to see the whole ad or whether they want to be able to skip the ad. That depends on the ad, really. Exactly. It? If it's something for a exactly. product I'm not interested exactly. in. So, yeah, exactly. So if, if it's if, got um, the, the one for the glasses people with the mole coming up, and you know, I quite like that one. I like to see that <laughs> over and over again. Exactly. So I think the option, if that option is given to the consumer, to the viewer, to be able to whether want to see the whole ad or just skip that ad, I think that is something that's, that's going to happen. Uh, uh, there is, within the audience measure world, there is always this question about viewability and what's the best definition for a viewability and all that. And that, once that gets set, there are different school of thoughts on that and all, everybody has a different uh, angle to it. But once that gets standardized and everybody says, okay, this is what the standards are and we're going to, I think then the advertising world will also start uh, getting used to it and change accordingly. Of course, the problem with skipping ads is that if you want to get to the front of the part, next part of the show, you end up watching the last ad in the break about three or four times. So that's sort of some good, good brand recognition comes in, at, uh, <laughs> comes in at that point. What about the future of, of panels? Is, uh, Jill, do you think they're going to stay in their, their present form or is there I think, improvements on the way? Well, I think... Panels, because of this continuous fragmentation, panels can't do the, the job they were originally set up to do. So they need support. And the support comes uh, from you know, all of the, the different census measurement uh, solutions there are. So it will be tagged content. It will be RPG data all coming in to support the panel. So the, the biggest value the panel brings is, that, is the who. The exactly. Who, who was it watching? What are the demographics? Because that's where the, the huge value is in advertising. So now you're no longer just, you know, a view. We know exactly who you are. And, and so there's a, there's a massive value to that. And that's where, you know, what panels bring and what we need them to bring and to work harder to bring that to the digital side of things as well. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's, a, it's a hybrid world that, that, that the future is, and, and panels have a role, but, but big data has a huge role to play yeah. too. Yeah, and it's not just who, it's also cross-media deduplication. Mm -hmm. yes. if, if you have a panel, you know that this was mm -hmm. one person watching this particular broadcaster on three different devices, and you get that information from a panel, whereas if you have different data sources, it'll be a different device ID or a different ID watching different contents. So to be able to report reach and frequency, um, you know, panel has to be the center of every solution. And would you see the size of the panel, the number of people participating? Would that grow? I guess there comes a point when you don't actually get any further information, however yeah. large the panel is. But is, is there room, if that's possible, to 
increase the number of people participating? Yeah, definitely. I guess it's budget oriented. It is a huge investment, uh, you know, maintaining a panel, recruiting a panel. Uh, there are quite a lot of markets that are, you know, that we are now enlarging the panel for. Um, but, but of course, it varies market by market. I think it varies on the budget. But people do understand that in order to bring all these data sources together to unlock the value of viewership, uh, a single source panel Panel is the key so that you can use the information of who and reach across different devices and platforms <coughs> on that panel, but to avoid fragmentation, because it is going to be a small panel, to avoid fragmentation, you can then make use of all the big data that are available, whether it's hybrid TV or return path data or streaming tags. Then you make use of this to enhance the panel so that, you know, you uh, sort of Tick mark on uh, on everything that can be reported using all the data sets. Till, do you want to come? No, I just that? I just wanted to add. I think panel will ha remain a, a important role as you, long as you have the hybrid world of, of IP and 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 broadcast or all traditional linear broadcast. Um, the further the digitalization gets, and you know, then I think we will come to a point where there's actually no use for panel anymore because you can literally track everything and. 100% of the, of, the, of the users and not only a subset of the users in the panel uh, with digital tools. So I think it's, the long, you know, as long we, we're having linear broadcast in traditional way um, via satellite or, or, or cable, uh, not IP-based, then you might have a panel. But after that, I, I would doubt really that there's a, 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 root, a, course, a, well, a case for, for a panel. I wonder whether the, the broadcasters, are they like able to keep up with the kind of changes and information that you can deliver deliver to them it is a lot yeah, it is, a, it, is, it is a lot. And I think it also comes from the broadcaster. They want all this information to be able to better strat, to have a better strategy for either for their content or uh, monetization of their content. So um, very recently, we did a, a proof of concept for RTL in the Netherlands. So they had device level data with RTL usage, uh, which they use for monetization, but they don't know who the device ID belongs to. So to be able to efficiently monetize the data that they had, what we did for them was to append the census level data uh, with the who. So you know this device ID is 80% um, a male and also belongs to a household with children. And you can imagine how important that information is for the millions of devices that they have mm. to be able to monetize uh, you know, that data. So it comes from the from the broadcasters. It's an interesting one because I, I can imagine, uh, particularly with small children, probably teenagers as well, for that matter, you know, of almost gathering round a mobile to watch, and you know, four or five crowded round and, and looking, and that's five people rather than the one that you might expect the mobile device to be. Exactly. That's true. Mm -hmm. Which it's, is why the panels are yeah. important. Yeah. yeah. The co-viewing and that's uh, where, uh, uh, in terms of the panels, all said and done, they would still be the core where, as a research company or an as audience measurement company, we know because that they have been, uh, the panels have been established in such a way that they are nationally representative of the universe that you are measuring. So you know the demographics, you know who it is, you know, uh, and that, that is why panel becomes that much more important. Yes, in the hybrid world, you will get all the other data that you can get, but that will all get overlaid on the panel data to be able to get you the right demographics. And now we also want to do um, different platforms using the same panel. So yeah. how many people were watching this broadcaster? And then on top of that, how many people were also watching YouTube and Netflix, and, but on a smartphone, but on a tablet? Uh, you know, so, there's, so we get all this information in one data set, which is real data, which is real behavior, and which is why it's important for, uh, for any, any solution. I guess as you know, you can make a good guess, you know, based on the type of uh, of content. But uh, as they say, proof of pudding, as it were, is uh, is actually seeing and looking at that data. Well, thank you all very much uh, for uh, taking part thank in you, our, uh, our panel uh, this afternoon. The show, the panel, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.